Because look at the archetype. He has Naya Blitz with an exclamation point. Your favorite thing, an exclamation point. They are, and I love it. All right, so I am pretty excited. Force Mead has a little bit of an inconsistent Jun deck. It's not that focused, so I think this could be a very tough matchup for him. Yeah, as and opposed to like your normal Jun deck or your normal Junk Random yes. deck, he's trying to do both, which yep. is going to leave him a little bit unfocused, maybe stumble around, maybe draw the wrong half of his deck. You know, mm -hmm. something like that can't happen. And when you're playing a side blitz, that's not good. Oof, he did just roll snake eyes. Oh, look at Forrest, real tough guy, just yeah. rolls the one die. I've tried that before, it's yeah. backfired. I mean, I like the guy's shirt. He's also playing with Liz Nugent's amazing uh, penguin sleeves. Uh, her her uh, creature collection is unbelievable. She's already had a vampire, a, a squirrel, Ooh. and the penguin. And we've got a couple more coming out for yeah, you guys heard, later on this year. Heard some big news on some new ones coming out there. Can't divulge that information. We yet. can't We can't tell no yet. No spoilers on Liz's artwork. But if you know, they're going to be awesome and adorable like the rest of them. Yeah. I've got the penguin box and the penguin sleeves at home. Normally, yeah. Brad, when I play, I, have pen I, I take the sleeves, I play them for one turn, I just throw them away. But you got to keep them. Yeah. I save the penguin sleeves. They're actually in the deck box. Yeah. On my desk I mean, I'll even home. tell you, I was like, we were, uh, we we're doing playtest videos, and I was like, Evan, can I get some squirrels to promote her her stuff on our Versus videos? And he's like, sure. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like laughing myself, like, I just want to play with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> promote, quote unquote. As we do take a look at Forrest's deck list, if you guys not, have not seen the deck tag, we'll probably run it again uh, another time this week. And it's also on the coverage website, of course. Three Olivia's, two Restoration Angels, three Hunt Master of the Fells, four Thragtos, three Deathrite Shamans, uh, two Pillar of Flames, two Victim of Knights, a Mortars, three Bonfire of the Dam, two Ractors Return, two Unburial Rites, a Sever, four Farseek, two Abrupt Decay, and two Grizzly Salvage. Yes. So he's a little all over yeah. the place. But as we as we all know, a deck tech is great, but seeing it in action is even better. And as we see, both players did mulligan to six here. Four starts with a Blood Crypt, but Aaron has the Champion of the deck and Champion of the Parish. Arguably the best one drop in the format. You can certainly make an argument for Addison's Pilgrim yeah. as well. All right, so we have, uh, what do we have, an Abrupt Decay or a Searing Spear coming? Because there was uh, a Farseek in Forest Hand that he um, did not play. So it looks like he probably does have a removal spell here. And we're going to see Cavern of Souls likely going to name Human here yeah. for Aaron. The jig is up. I am playing the Nia Blitz deck. And we'll see an Abrupt Decay take care of the champion from Parish. But Thalia could be a bit of an issue. Yeah, Thalia does hurt a deck like uh, Forest since uh, he does have these uh, abrupt decays and these far six, but as well as the grizzly cell, which is a lot of more spells that uh, aren't actually interacting with your opponent immediately. Double death right shaman is not that bad. It can double block this Thalia, so uh, Aaron might just have to get that mare into play with the uh, forest elite, and what that'll uh, let him do is next turn he can play that flint hoof boar with the mountain, with the red source, with the spicy sizzling bacon. Ooh. Sounds good. That's just what I had for uh, for breakfast. It wasn't so bad. Did you? How'd you find bacon? I got lucky. I did not find any bacon. Running I'll good. Because we do see that mare and the Boros Elite. Here comes Thalia. 3-2 first striker. Death right Shamans cannot take care of that. And Aaron is just going to pass the turn back. Let's see what Force is able to find here. As he does draw a Hunt Master of the Fells. That is not a land. And you can see in his hand right now, He's Brad, stuck. you see a far seek. You see cards that he can't cast. And you're going to see Mare of Everbrook flip into Howl oh. Pack. Alpha. So now he's going to be able to attack with everything. He's probably going to keep that Thalia back since now it's back down to a 2-1. Uh, so we're going to get that boar into play, give it haste, attack with three three threes. Um, and what that'll let him do is uh, get around these two de Deathrite Shamans that are able to not chump block any of them. And now you see that Flint Hoof boar coming to play. You see it getting haste. And now you see the boar is and he... the alpha coming in. And is he going to attack with that elite? Because it will be a 3-3 because three, three of the Battalion trigger. And All he right. just opts he... to hold that back. Buddy, Battalion, Blitz. You gotta use it. You gotta, gotta attack. attack. You know you know who would have attacked? Who? Always put, yeah. or always shove. Oh, always, always jam Nico always Christensen. Jam, yeah. We do see an attack there, and we see Forrest draw another card, and what we don't see here is him drawing lands. As you see him staring at a bonfire of the dam that he would have loved to cast a couple turns ago. Would have mopped everything up, but he doesn't have the lands to be able to do that. So Aaron does just draw a card. I think he has another Flint Hoof Boar in his hand. You see Rootbound Crag, and you see Temple Garden, so... His hand is pretty nice. Yeah, I would not complain if I was in Aaron's uh, position. He not only had a very aggressive draw, but Forrest is not doing absolutely anything. And now you see... Always jam, always jam. You see always jam, and he is doing it this go-around. No fear. Yeah. And Deathrite Shaman, along with the lands, are going to get picked up, and Forrest Mead down a game. Aaron LeBlanc with Naya Blitz. Up one. I get to see Forrest Mead. I get to see Blitz. This is. I get bunny ears. I get double standard weekend. My buddy Jake won a PTQ. It's a good weekend. Good clean living. That's I love what they it. Call it. I got a good night's sleep. 
yeah, must be unreal <laughs> nice to be able to do that. <laughs> I hope I beat you to sleep so bad this weekend because I'm gonna snore you, you, like crazy. I don't, you'll just fake it. You'll just like not get sleep just to bug me tonight. That's true. I will. <laughs> I, like, I, I am will not above that. Yeah. I'm not above that at all. And I am gonna sleep on the plane. It's just trust like me. it's like that 3 a.m. Cedric goes pillow fight. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's battle. I'm good at those. As we're gonna take a look at Forest's sideboard here uh, on Hunt Master of the Fells. Two copies of Assemble Legion, two, two uh, excuse me, Acidic Slimes, two Tragic Slips, two Duress, the Museum Orders, two Slaughter Games, a Death Right Shaman, and a Rough Decay, and a Raxus Return. Obviously, you're going to want to lower the curve and board in as much removal as you can, and board in some two for ones like a Huntmaster of the Fells, so you can expect to see that come in. Those two Slips are going to join us, that Mortars will join us, and we might see that additional Death Right Shaman as it is a decent blocker, and that Abrupt Decay will probably yes, come in. Yes, uh, those are all really good cards in this matchup. Uh, we do see a Jund Rights list, but even when I transition, uh, with a junk deck, I go away from unbearer rights in this matchup. It's just too slow. All you have to do is put a little bit of defense up, and that usually crumbles a deck like Naya Blitz. Uh, the only cards you do have to worry about at that point are the mares that flip and create more creatures, or the frontline medics. That's all Force really has to worry about in the long game, yep. those eight spells. So, on Aaron's side of the board, though, he has two Torment Scripts, three Boris Reckoners, three Pacifisms, two Fiend Hunters, three Boris Charms, and two Grill Charms. None of these are actually that great in this matchup. Uh, I haven't been a fan of any. The pacifisms are okay at dealing with some of the threats, but not all of them. Uh, so you probably will see those cards coming in for maybe uh, the Lightning Mullers. Now, m not a lot of Nye Blitz players are psychopaths like me. I usually take out my Lightning Mullers because they're not that good. Uh, but you, you, you see people always wanting to jam, and you want the most aggressive draws as possible. So I think that's what we're going to see. Another card that sometimes can come in in this matchup is the Gruel Terms. Uh, Jund decks have two different draws. They have the high removal uh, draw or the I'm going to play a bunch of creatures and try to bonfire you out. Now, the Gruel Terms are very good when your opponent is not interacting with you and they're just trying to put defenses up. And you can just Gruel Term, get enough damage in because you usually can do about seven damage in, before you get shut down by cards like Thrag Tusk and Hunt, Huntmaster. But you build this just army of high power creatures. So a Gruel Charm forces the falter, doesn't let any of them block, gets in, or uh, it also deals with an Olivia early in the game by just dealing three damage to all creatures in the air. Sure. So yeah, we could see Gruel Charm, a card that you don't see a ton of, maybe even Boris Charm for a little bit of reach. I'm not sure if he's going to go that route or not. I have never been a fan of Boris Charm in this matchup. The Boris Charm technically has one mode, and that is my guys don't die sure. to Supreme Verdict. Okay. That's usually what you use that card for. Uh, Thalia is very good on the play, not on the draw, so even though Forrest uh, is down a game and could very well win this game, it's so difficult to get back from Blitz on the play. One thing that's also interesting here, if you're Aaron, you know, you only saw two Deathrite Shamans and a, uh, an Abrupt Decay, so you're probably assuming that Forrest is playing a Jund deck. It's very easy to make that assumption. Or, I mean, he could just be a failed uh, junk deck, too. That's true, too. So, you know, he's not really sure, you know, unless he, you know, maybe saw the deck deck or knows Forest or something like that, maybe he sat next to him around or two. You know, he might not have an idea of what he's playing against. Yeah. You know, his strategy is still going to hold the same. The Naya Blitz deck is always trying to take the opponent from 20 to 0 as fast as possible, but he can't influence the sideboarding because he didn't really see anything game one. Yeah, that's very true. And I think uh, that's a great place to be in a Gruel Charm. Uh, as well, I think he could have boarded that because it is good in both matchups at dealing with lingering soul chump blockers or just getting uh, the centaur killers, threat tusks, and lot trolls out of the way from that. So it's a good hedge if he's just going that route. I probably wouldn't bring in the Tormod's Crypt until I seen an actual card that I wanted to get rid of in the graveyard. Well, we'll see how he does up to sideboard here as he is finishing shuffling up here. Up a game with the Naya Blitz deck, a deck you were hoping to see on camera. I'm so happy. And I do just want to point out, while we're still seeing the opponent shuffle, that my bunny ears are so much better than floor judge Jeff Foster's. His are just hanging. They're a little sloppy. They're yeah. not straight up in the air. He doesn't really seem to want it as bad as you. He doesn't want it as yeah. bad as me. That much is clear. Yeah. As we do see Forrest taking a shuffle here. Aaron shuffling Forrest deck. Both players preparing here for game two. We saw just a Naya Blitz beat down here in game one. If you guys are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Brad Nelson here in the booth. Star City Games Open Series has made it to Orlando, Florida. Day two, second standard open. Round oh, five of eight. It is beautiful. It's Easter Sunday. It's sunny outside, and I am with one of the best commentators in the world, Cedric Phillips, and I am counting everyone. Very Even football commentators wow. and basketball ones. Very much appreciated. Sports I appreciate enthusiasts. It. Cedric Phillips. I also enjoy sports. Okay. I'm I big, do. I'm a big sports guy. Yep. And if you enjoy sports as much as Brad as I do, you can join us on Twitter. The conversation is SCG Live, hashtag SCGORL. You can tell us just how awesome bunny ears are and just how good of a card Champion of the Parish is on turn one. 
Uh, it is very good, uh, but it is going to fall and scrape its knee. Yeah, mm. its knee's a little out. It can't really run. It's got to stop for a little bit. What a wimp that champion is tied to a tragic slip. Well, he doesn't have any friends. Uh, yeah. If he had a couple friends, he would not fall and hurt his knee. The one card you do see in his hand right now, Brad, is you do see a Thalia, is you actually do see a Gruel Charm in Aaron's hand. Yeah, so we do have that Gruel Charm that is going to shut down that Olivia, but we also see Victim of the Night and Huntmaster in hand. Also, the Restoration. Ooh, we could get dirty. Forrest is not fighting fair this game. Well, we are going to see Thalia come across. Forrest says Victim of the Night's going to take care of that. Victim of the Night, a card that we'll bring up on screen for you guys. It's a rule spell that, you know, some see some play sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. We even saw it make a bit of a splash at Pro Tour Return of Ravnik on Seattle. Yeah. Yuya Watanabe playing them in his Jund deck. Yes, and, and speaking of Jund, I, I've i geeked out the hardest when I saw a Victim of the Night target a creature and then that person in response turned into a vampire with Olivia. Ooh. It's so beautiful when things like that happen. That's what that makes me fun. a Magic fan. Now yeah. that is fun. Because we're going to see a post-combat experiment one, and he's going to follow that up with a Mare of Aberbrook. So there will be no Evolve, but the experiment one is a human, so it will become a 2-2. It might not have evolved, but it did get more sophisticated. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like to use the big words with all the syllables. Because <laughs> we are going to see an Olivia Valder, and that's a lot of syllables. And that one's also yeah. really, really hard to beat as well. It but is. But Rule Charm in the house, that's going to take care of that. And that's a card we'll bring up on screen for and you. If, Brad, you called it. If you're not Gruel, then die. Is that the flavor text? Yes, it is. Wow, I thought you were going to say, if you're not gruel, you're not cool. Well, not gruel, then die. Well, you were close enough. Yes. Borbogamos. He's got a thing to say Borbor about it. Borborigmos. I like calling it Borborgamos. I, I do, too, but Lauren yells at me all the time mm. when I say that. Everyone trying to be all correct. All right, I, so like to call him, I like to call him an Enrique Iglesias single. All right. Borbogamos. So, uh, <laughs> despite our, you know, Borbogamos talk, this board is really bad. Uh, Aaron is going to have to find maybe that extra Gruel Charm, maybe flip that Mare and try to build that way. Uh, we do see a Lightning Mauler uh, and some Evolve. So we can just send our team, which would make the Thrake Tusk have to trade. Now this is a very good decision because Aaron does not know that Forrest has a Restoration in his deck and hand. Yeah. Uh, maybe if I was Forrest, I might not even block there. That Thrake Tusk is... No, the, the Thraktos should die right now. Yes, by my math, uh, that is a uh, that is a three three yes, experiment one from the should. counter plus the mayor. So should we will uh, we will stop that. There we go. So we fix that really quickly here. Beast token will come into play. Our game state is correct. <gasps> Jerry Thompson. Blasphemy. Jerry Thompson in the house. That is not a Brad Nelson token. What is Force doing? I think Force knows that you're watching. I can I can I go take him one? No, nope. is that okay? Nope. Gotta, nope. stay, gotta stay here. The Sorry, director's man. shaking his head. As we are going to see a far seek here from Forrest. Maybe regretting that block in the experiment one now. We're not Good. sure. Good. Good has been announced. Good. Brad I thought little, we were friends. Brad a little bitter seeing the Jerry Thompson token out there. Jerry secretly at home watching. Probably pretty pleased Jerry with what he's done. Jerry is a slumlord rat token. He is. Wow. That is not an insult. I'm saying all of them. Wow. Now, he is lingering souls tokens. Okay. But he is not a beast token. And now Jerry is off the screen. Now we're just back to a regular beast token. Is that a, is that a fair compromise? Yes, that is fine. All right. <laughs> All right. Four is going down to 18. And with one Restoration Angel in hand, he's going to pass the turn. The Farsig does keep the mayor down. But he's going to have to find either a Mizzy Mortars or a Bonfire really quick here. Yeah, he needs a way to clear off this board here because this is where Naya Blitz really does start working well together. You know, this is a deck that it does have powerful cards on its own, but it works... The, the deck works together very well in tandem, as you're going to see a Fiend Hunter take care of the Beast token here. That's not something you can Restoration Angel. But the, I think he's going to be able to get that Mare off the board. Who plays around Rest... Oh, he doesn't... I would have slowed down. I think he snapped that Restoration off a little too fast because he might have attacked with that Mare. Yeah. Either way, it's going to eat that Lightning Waller. Experiment 1 does come across for 4 points uh. of damage, and Forrest is just going to have to pass the turn. We're going to see Howl Pack Alpha join the party. Humans won't get any bigger, but Wolves and Werewolves will, as Aaron does draw a Gruel Charm again. So that's a, that is a really nice card. It's yes. a nice hedge. Yeah, it is very good. Uh, I think what I would do on this board, though, is maybe just play that Mare. It is not lethal yet. He doesn't have, but he does know that Forrest did not draw a spell because if he did, he would have killed something. That is a very obvious thing when your opponent has, when you have a mare and your opponent just says, go after drawing a card, it is a land. And you see Aaron in his hand. He has a Burning Tremors here. He has a Flint of Four, and he does have that Gruel Charm. So he's just trying to figure out how he wants to go about playing this turn right now. You know, well, can. I don't think he's going to play two spells. Yeah, that's oh, one he's thing just I don't sending? think is going to happen. He is going to send here. 
Pal Pack Alpha. Uh, we are going to see Gruel Charm finish off that Drug Restoration Angel. Greg could not have went better for Forrest. Forrest has got to be pretty happy, and he's looking to draw something that does anything here. And you see Hunt Master Fells, that card does something. That does do something. This this is a, a great place for Forrest. If he just didn't, if Aaron did not get that aggressive, he would have been able to, or even attack him with the, like, a great play that could have happened is he could have attacked with the Experiment one, regenerated, and then dealt three, and then it still would have evolved off of the Wolf coming into play, getting it back up to a 2-2. Two -two. So he is going to go up to six is Forrest. You're going to see a Burning Tree Emissary here. You're going to see a Lightning Mower. Those guys are going to partner up. In come the Doofuses. So we are going to be able to see some trading here, it looks like. Yeah. Well, could have saved himself. Go ahead. he could have saved himself and just blocked the, the Fiend Hunter, leaving the Huntmaster around. Um, and he would have just went to a, a reasonable the same life total. You see he's going to draw a Death Rite Shaman and pass the turn back. And Aaron is going to quickly untap. Of course, we know in the booth, just like you guys who know at home, there's a Flint Hook 4 in his hand. So let's see if he's going to cast that or if he's going to maybe, maybe I'll think himself a little bit here. But he is going to play Flint Hook 4. Yeah. He is going to give it haste. He's going to jam. Yeah. Four shows from Woodland Cemetery and does concede the game. So Aaron LeBlanc with nine blitz. Blitz. Blitz does beat the jump right stack. Forrest did have some mana troubles game one. Yeah. Maybe flooded out a little bit game two. Wasn't able to find a Bonfire of the Damned or a Misery Mortars in time. And you see the power of Blitz when it does not get disrupted. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Forrest did flood out a little bit there in game one after kind of a screw in, or in game two, excuse me, after a screw in game one. And that just shows what Nia can do. The, the, the decks in center right now can be very inconsistent. Whereas Nia Blitz is also playing that same game of inconsistency, but it can function off less lands and less spells just by how 